All right, guys. Okay, mystery man. Instead of Glenn and Bessie Hyde, I typed in Hyde and Glessie, Bessie Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the Mystery Society, season two, episode. What is this? Ten? Well, wow. episode ten. Um, oh, it's been a lot. Yeah, already, God, already episode ten. Yeah. Uh, I'm your host Taylor Dahl, and with me today are Nate Doan and Jen Maraska, my two dearest friends. Today I will be telling the story of uh, the disappearance of Glenn and Bessie Hyde. This one takes place, well, kind of Arizona. Yeah, I think. Partially in Arizona, so it's close to home. Homegrown story. Homegrown story. It's a good old homegrown story because it is actually, I think, the earliest of all my stories so far. 1928? Wow. Or was that also when um, Diotla passed took place? No, 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 that was. That might be the earliest. In 1928, a very young, recently married couple, Glenn and Bessie Hyde, set off to make history. River running down the Grand Canyon, the uh, Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. Well, Glenn, who did have experience with similar kinds of uh, adventures, um, wanted to set the record for the fastest time through the canyon. And by bringing his wife with him, she would automatically become the first woman to river run the Grand Canyon. That's awesome. So um, they set off in October of 1928 from Green River, Utah, river running down the Green River and then the Colorado River. They traveled for over a month successfully, which is a long time to be on the water, especially for Bessie being so new. So they traveled for a month successfully on the river before they made a pit stop in uh, Grand Canyon Village. They needed to resupply, so they made a stop there. And when they made a stop, they met a couple famous photographer brothers, the Kolb brothers, Ellsworth and Emery Kolb were a couple of well-known photographers who were, I believe, living around there at the time, and they wound up actually, the pair of river runners met the photographers when they made this pit stop and asked them to take their photograph for them. Because remember, like, uh, uh, well, I mean, they, 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 they did, they did have their own, their own camera. It just, you know, it took some, there's a difference between having a photographer take your photos and taking your own photos on your own camera. They just made good friends, they took their photos, it would take a while for them to develop, so they said that they would come back and get the photos after their trip. So Glenn mentioned to the brothers at one point that they didn't have life jackets, which the brothers were, like, shocked about, and they're like, yeah, but they just, um, the hides just laughed it off, I guess. Well, They're like, ah, we don't, Bessie we don't need those. I know. Unfamiliar I know. to like the the whole river running mm-hmm. right. thing, you'd think that they'd want to take some precautions and like at least keep her safe at right. the very least. Right. Basically, they weren't heard from for the next uh, few weeks, and so search parties were sent out. I believe one of the search parties was led by the Cold Brothers. It was actually a plane flying overhead found that their boat. Uh, near River Mile 237. So you assume that if they're not with the boat and it's not tied up, it's going to continue down the river without them. Right. So it's likely that they did not make it past mile marker 237. The boat was completely intact. All of their supplies, their cameras, their journals, all that was still in the boat. Okay. The boat was not capsized and it was seemingly fine. This was December 19th. So this was, was cold. So when they set out from the Cold Brothers, that was November 18th, when they started back on their journey. Um, and that's the last that they were seen. Um, so on November 18th, they set, set back off again down the river. And December 19th is when they find their boat. That's a long time. Yeah, that is a long time. That's basically the story. They didn't really, they, they've never found any bodies mm-hmm. or any real signs of them. Um, there's a possible campfire that they found, um, let me see, around mile marker 226. Remember the boat was at 237, I believe? Yeah. 237. So 226, they found a campfire on by the side of the river that could, could have possibly been made by them, so which would show that they made it at least that far. In their journal, though, I believe that Bessie described their location, their last known location. Oh, they found a journal on yeah, yeah, she had a journal. So in that, they just she described her last location, and they they found it to be um, 
most likely near this place called Diamond Creek. So they did a lot of searching over there. Um, I believe their their parents, their dad came down too and like helped tried to look for him too. It, nothing really adds up. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like why, why leave the boat with all your stuff? And if like, how would you get really thrown from the boat without it? Are there any pictures getting... of the boat? Yeah. Just, I'm kind of wondering how big it was. This is, this is Glenn on the boat. Wow, so not a great boat. No, it's, it, it's not a great boat, you're right. It's also not as big as, there's a real potential for them to have gotten off the boat to maybe camp for a night, potentially, you know, a little more comfortably than being crammed onto the boat with all of their supplies, then wandering off and something happening. I mean, I don't, yeah. I know there are like elk up in the area now, but I don't know what kind of animals would be down like in the actual canyon yeah. area. Yeah, I'm just, or maybe like they could have gotten out of the boat to make camp and I don't know, forgot to tie up the boat and it just got swept away or yeah. something. And then they're kind of just shit out of luck. There's some, there were rapids. It's possible that they could have just gotten like bumped Not out of the boat, boat. Yeah, exactly. in the rapids. However, there is one more theory, which is kind of an insane one, but that's why I like it so much. A, a woman named Georgie White, uh, or Georgie Clark, Georgie White Clark, I think is what her name was, but she gained fame for her river rafting adventures in the Grand Canyon. Oh, that's cool. She, she had friends, but they didn't really um, know her super personally. I guess they hadn't been over to her house that often. Okay. When she died in 1992, they were looking through her personal effects. They found the marriage certificate between Bessie Hyde and Glenn Hyde. I'm sorry, Whoa. what? That's so crazy. Um, Did she, what? As well as a birth certificate that indicated that her real name was Bessie DeRoss, not Georgie Clark or Georgie White. What the fuck? And yeah, and a pistol in her lingerie drawer. And like the book about investigating Glenn and Bessie Hyde. What? So, like, it sounds like there's a theory that basically she was Bessie Hyde and maybe like killed her abusive husband out on the river. Killed her husband and then just fucking disappeared. Run, took the <laughs> glory. Then, yeah, yeah, just became like a famous river runner after that. That's kind of badass. It's crazy. That's, yeah, that's a wild story. It's though. really weird that she would have any of that stuff. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, let me see this, let me see this, let me see this. Wait, 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 wait. 1944, this is Georgie, this is, this is Georgie, yeah, this is Georgie White's um, Wikipedia page. Georgie White Clark was a river running guide in the Grand Canyon. From she was born 1911, died 1922. In particular, Wait, when did she, she died? 22? 1992. Oh, I thought you Sorry, okay. sorry. 1911 and 1992. Okay. She was the first woman to run the Grand Canyon as a commercial enterprise, and she introduced several innovations and adjustments to the way that guides ran the Colorado. The United States Board's Board on Geographic Names renamed Mile 24 Rapid in her honor. Be born Bessie DeRoss in Oklahoma, she was raised in Denver, Colorado from the age of nine. She mar married Harold Clark while still in high school and had a daughter, Simona Rose, at age 17. Mm. She was, it, I remember it saying though that Bessie DeRoss, or like when Hyde married Bessie, she was a divorcee. It said that, that she had already been divorced. Oh. Here's the thing, Georgie and her daughter were close companions after her divorce from Clark. Engaging in outdoor activities such as mountain and rock climbing, skiing, skating, and bicycling. In 1944, her 15-year-old daughter was killed by a hit-and-run driver. In 1944, her 15-year-old daughter. So she would have had to have that daughter in 1929. If she went missing, if they, like, she did go missing in 1928 and started right. a new life and then had a kid in 1929. And that... I guess that, that timeline would have checked out because if she was with her husband in 28 and then killed him and then nine months later in 29 
She would have been 17 years old. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa. It says... So, how old was Bessie supposed to be when she went missing? <clears throat> yeah. Good question. Because if Bessie was, like, 30 years old, then... The whole theory is bunk. Yeah. It says she was born in 1905. Instead oh, of so 1911. Just, just, like, a six-year difference. Yeah. But that still means that Bessie would have been, like, in her, in her 20s. 20s. Oh, she would have been, like, 20... Georgie would have been 17. It says river historian Brad Dimmick and White's biographer, Bessie, or uh, Georgie, Georgie White's biographer Richard Westwood, have discounted the rumor that White and Hyde were the same person. This is them here. Okay. That's Glenn and Bessie Hyde. This is Georgie White. That's Georgie White. Son of a bitch. She's not oh. even facing the camera. I mean, that's pretty close. They look pretty similar. I it does look pretty similar. I think. I think it does look very similar. Yeah. That's I'm interesting. Have to put those side by side. I know. We're gonna have to get some of the private investigators who follow our videos to look into that. Hey, if you're a PI, email us. If you're a PI, DM. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. Hi, hey, Taylor. Hey. Okay. Oh. Yeah, she and then does look. I think a few years, a few years she later. She does look seventeen. She looks super young. Yeah, absolutely. I almost wish she was smiling, just so you could like see the shape of her mouth a little bit more. I just wish. But in that picture with her husband, she looked miserable. Yeah, she didn't look very happy. About no, her. but I mean, that's probably how they pose for photographs still at that point. True. Oh, she she's smiling in that one. That smile, so how weird. straight it is, and she really has like similar. those little dimples. Yeah. That looks like her. But either way, even if uh, Georgie White wasn't um, Bessie Hyde, mm -hmm. still wouldn't be super unlikely for an unhappy married couple possibly to be out in isolation on a boat for over a month together and tensions to run high and for yep. something to happen. Yeah, uh, It's also some sort of a possibility to keep in mind. But either way, we might... It's been a long time, almost 100 years. This is God. this is one we might not ever yeah. find out about, but it's too bad. Definitely an interesting one. Yeah, it's that's sad. Yeah. Thank you for watching. We hope you'll tune in next week when Jen's gonna tell us about the Cowden family and their mystery. But until then, class dismissed. Bye. 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 Bye.